Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about soft skills and how to train them. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, can you make a video about how to train your soft skills? And the short answer is that that is a really big ask because it's such a broad topic, but I can give you some guidance at the very least on how to figure out what you need to do in order to develop really strong soft skills. Let me explain. So the problem with soft skills and defining what soft skills are is that it is as broad as asking how do you become a good leader? because that's in essence what it is about, at least from my perspective. We need to narrow it down a little bit because soft skills to a lot of people may mean that, well, you're just sociable. And to, for, in my definition, it is not the same thing. Having soft skills and just being, soci and being sociable is fundamentally different things. They are very similar, but they're a little bit different because as you probably have seen in many well, hopefully many times in your life, you will have people who are the absolute life of the party or you have people who just naturally just are the social butterflies that talk to people and hang out and so forth. And you may think that having those that, that ability to talk to people like that, that that's soft skills, it's actually not. Because when you're in a, say, professional environment where we, in this case, we're going to talk about programmers, when you're dealing with people, it's not as important to just be able to talk to people because soft skills fundamentally is about a, a more directed way of communication, if that makes sense. If you're just a very sociable person and nice to hang around, that doesn't really matter if you can't actually talk to people in a way where they understand your ideas and where they are willing to buy into different the different suggestions that you have which means that you can talk to them but they don't really understand what you do or what you want to happen and they won't actually move anywhere they won't actually take action on anything you say and that is what soft skills actually comes down to to be able to to communicate effectively with other people in such a way that they understand what you're thinking why you're thinking this thing and why they should agree with you it's uh, it's at least the best definition that I can give of soft skills. So I suppose I would summarize it as saying that, well, soft skills is your is basically your ability to socially maneuver within any a, a given context and make things and people move in the direction that you want them to move. You can call it influencing people basically in a, in different fashions. And since that is a very, very big topic, I will break it down to three core questions that I believe is going to, once you answer them for yourself, give you the best chance of developing these skills. So the first question is going to be, are you confident in yourself? Do you feel comfortable in your own skin? This is a very powerful question, and it's a very hard question to answer because I'm not stating that you have to be confident just across the board. Every person is confident in some context, and in some contexts, you are not very confident. <clears throat> there, are ma there are many people <clears throat> who will be extremely confident in a context where they feel that they can perform really well and that they're going to do really well. And then if you put them in a context where they don't really know anything, they kind of get self-conscious immediately. They don't really know what's going on and that makes them feel insecure. It's not that many people who are going to be just confident I don't think anybody basically can be confident in any given circumstance. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that are you confident in your role? And in this case we're software developers, so fundamentally I'm asking you, do you feel that you're comfortable within your role as a software developer? Do you feel that you can answer stakeholder questions? Do you feel that you know enough about the systems and your profession to with fair, a fair amount of certainty say that oh it's going to take this amount of time or it's going to do we're going to have to do things in this way and so forth because when you reach that level of quote, let's call it quote unquote seniority where you kind of know the motions of all of this stuff you kind of just know roughly what's going to you, you you've just reached a level of professional uh, development uh, where you don't really feel nervous anymore about answering so, or answering questions 
if you can reach that level that and that's like where you need to be in order to I would say pass that question do you feel confident and for a junior developer that's going to be very unlikely that you're going to be at that point in the beginning of things but by just asking that question at the very least you're going to get a hint at what you need to do in order to progress some of that confidence is going to you're going to accumulate just by being in the environment of software development or being within your role because as I said earlier if you just spend enough time in an environment uh, you will at the very least get accustomed to how that environment works and that's one of the reasons why it's so important to work in real IT companies and so forth to develop those soft skills because that is usually the environment that you're going to find yourself in. Second question is do you understand how the fish will move? Now this is of course very specific to my mind, but I will try to paint a mental picture for you uh, as to how I think about people interacting with each other. So I pretty much look at all hum uh, all groups of humans, all people you know, in general as a school of fish. And if you stand above the water and you tap the surface of the water, the fish will move. And my question is basically, do you understand what will happen if you tap at certain points around the fish? Do you understand how they will move? Because diff the fish are all different and they work in different ways depending on how you tap. If you tap on the left, some fish are going to go to the right and some are going to go up or down and so forth. And depending on how you tap, you will see that they move in different ways. And if you tap enough and you observe the fish moving around for long enough, you will start to see a pattern in how they will react. And the sequences can become really, really complicated. You might be tapping the water in many, 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 many ways and they will move in all kinds of manners. But once you start to understand how they, uh, how people think and move and behave and, uh, and what, what they will do based on different events that take place, you will get a very good understanding of how they react and how they think about, well, pretty much anything that happens. This is a very powerful w insight that you can acquire. It's really, really hard to get this and it requires a great deal of reflection and fundamentally the most important thing is to very, to, to to reflect a lot on different things that happens in your life and the thing that you observe. If you see people behave in a certain way, you need to ask, why are they doing this? What is, what are they thinking? Why are, and really, really think about it. Try to be objective about it. Don't judge people because you see them do something that feels weird to you. Really try to understand what is their thought process? Why are they acting in this way? And this is super complicated because a person might ask in one way when they're by themselves and something happens and they might act differently if they're in a group of other people interacting with them and the composition of that group also affects how they will react. And this is, these are very fluffy, soft things that you're going to have to learn. But the best way I can describe it, at least from my perspective, is that you never know what another human being is going to do a hundred percent and you never know what they're thinking but everything is a probability you get this sensation of it's very probable that if I do this or that or if this thing happens they're gonna do in this or they're gonna behave in that manner and once you get that you will start to be able to sort of predict what's very likely to happen next it's not like knowing the future necessarily but it's like have making being able to make a very educated guess of what's going to happen next and that's extremely powerful because then you can you can understand how people will behave if something happens or if you what you should say at any given moment in order to get things in the direction that you want you will understand the difference where between when it's a good time to suggest a new tool implementation or a new process or when you just really need to sit down with somebody and have a really heart to heart conversation with them Last question is, do you understand how to build trust between you and other people and to truly connect to them? This is a very hard thing to do for a lot of people because it fundamentally means that you need to be able to talk to people in a way where you, uh, where they truly believe that you have their 
their like the, the like the the best intentions for for their well-being or for for them you need to be able to understand people and connect to them in such a way that you can speak their language this is really really hard because it requires a lot of empathy and it requires a fair bit of practice and i would say it also requires that you actually care about the people that you talk to and if this is something that i truly believe can't be a quantity type of thing you can't go for volume here you need to go for quality it's similar to to that some people have a very small group of friends that they really really care about and then you have people who have casual acquaintances that you know they sort of care about but they don't really care about and having a lot of friends is not what I'm talking about and having a lot of people and being able to like shallowly talk with a lot of people isn't really what I'm talking about here what I'm talking about here is to truly understand and build trust between yourself and another and another human being the reason why this is so important for you to develop your soft skills is because if you want to be able to make another person understand your perspective and help them or guide them in any fashion you need to understand how to talk to them and what's important to them because if you don't understand that you will only be able to throw words at them and hopefully the thing that you say will be something that they process and if you can't get something to resonate with another human being they're not actually going to adopt your value system and that's what you want in many cases when you're dealing with people with different types of stakeholders so it's extremely important for you to be able to truly connect to another human being and choose that magic uh, and understand them so well that you understand their perspective and you understand how to talk to them in a such a way that the, that they understand your point of view and sometimes this is so complicated that it's practically impossible because as we are we humans are deeply deeply flawed and even if you can see that someone is in the wrong or if or something like that that may not be something that they are aware of there are tons of things that might be useful to us people and to to each of us but we don't see it ourselves and the problem with ha dealing with a human being that doesn't know what they should do or like that there's something they should be doing because it's good for them is that you need to bridge their own lack of under of personal insight and that is super tricky you really need to know them in order to give someone quality advice you need to understand that in some cases they are aware of their own issues and they will act if you just tell them to and in some cases they're not even aware of it and now you need to figure out how can you make them get that personal insight how can you guide them so that they understand your point of view so well that they will actually move on it so what I want you to take away from this is that in order for you to train your soft skills, I would argue that fundamentally most of what you need to do is to interact with people, being in the right and be in the right environment, be in the IT and community and understand how people just act and observe people and then truly reflect on why people think the way that they think and don't judge people, just look at what they do and then try to reflect and talk to them and ask them many times it's as easy as that just try to understand why they did something a certain way or try to figure out wh why they behave in a certain way in some cases you're gonna have to read between the lines because unfortunately in many cases people don't actually know why they do the, the things that they do and in some cases they think they know why they do the, what they do but in reality they're doing it for a very different reason these all these complexities exist within us people and the best way i've found to figure out and to get good at understanding this is just to interact with people and see what happens and then sit and reflect try to figure out okay why did they do that and when you have an idea try to talk to them about it and see if it seems feasible so ask yourself these three questions number one are you comfortable in your own skin if you are that's a great thing but it's the first step towards understanding what you need to do in order to feel comfortable in your role because people follow people who are comfortable people get comfortable around other people who are comfortable second question is do you understand how the fish will move do you understand that uh, how certain events within the environment will affect how people think and how they behave if you can do that you will see a pattern and that pattern is very powerful because that means that you can tap the water yourself and help guide the fish in the right direction third and lastly 
do you know how to connect with people and make meaningful connections if you can truly connect with people and make meaningful lasting relationship with a lot of trust you will have a much greater chance of communicating your ideas to these individuals and have them actually adopt your value system than if you just have shallow acquaintances where you kind of throw your words at them and they just nod and smile and say yeah sure but they don't actually feel that the thing that you're saying is correct. These are some of the things I think that you should do in order to develop your soft skills. Have a great day.